started satsang many years ago, I pay my obeisances in this manner. And the reason I pay my obeisances in this manner is that there is a flow of knowledge. The flow of knowledge starts from Lord Sriman Narayan, it comes down to my Guru and then through me it reaches you. And we pay our respects in attaining this knowledge. This knowledge is supposed to be the most valuable knowledge that mankind receives. I welcome all of you we are physically at the Sri Narayan Dham in Durban, South Africa. I welcome those that are watching this discourse locally, nationally and internationally. And I welcome in advance those that are going to be watching this discourse when it is posted on YouTube and the various groups from around the world subsequently. This knowledge that flows from the fountain and head of the Supreme Lord flows like a river. It is eternal. It does not stop flowing. And you can imagine yourselves as crops. on either side of the river bed. And what the Guru does is he creates little irrigation systems. He digs little trenches from this river to reach you so that you may be sustained and nourished by this knowledge. If you can imagine the river Ganges, you will note that beautiful plants, flora and fauna, exist on the banks of the river Ganges, drinking in that water. And you'll also notice poisonous plants also exist on the river Ganges, drinking in the same water. Is it true? So similarly in the satsang, the Guru will give you your nourishment from this knowledge. Those are of a poisonous nature will also get nourished and those are of a divine nature will also get nourished because the knowledge is absolute. The knowledge does not care who attains it. Knowledge simply is assimilated by everyone. Similarly, this river of knowledge flows into various religious systems. And it is this understanding 
with this understanding that I am conducting my discourses on oneness. The material universe is dictated by time and space. And when water leaves its source and continues on its journey, it reaches many different types of terrains, of land, many different conditions. But it is the same water that traverses the different terrains, the different plains, different temperatures. The same water becomes ice somewhere. The same water becomes snow somewhere else but it continues on its onward journey. The same water. And when it is transformed into snow, it changes its identity to snow. When it transforms into ice, it changes its identity to ice. Sometimes it becomes hot springs, to suit a particular environment, to suit a particular place, to suit nature in its many different compartments, that very same water will take different identities. But these different identities are necessary to suit a particular time and a particular place. Similarly, the same knowledge that started in the Vedas have spread into the various religious understandings of the world. Those of you that are connected to the internet, you can use the internet and verify what I am stating. But first, those of you that are in Sanat and Dharma, you need to learn your own religion. You need to get back into all my discourses. These discourses are transcribed and you need to start reading them from end to end and then go into the internet. There's a group there, Submit to Allah. There's another group, Torah Cafe, and there are quite a few Christian groups. Go and listen to the pastors, go and listen to the Molanas, go and listen to these spiritual leaders. And if you know your scripture, you see the teaching almost exactly the same. Almost identical. And I was reading or listening to a preacher in Submit to Allah and he had the identical concept of the Vedas where we call maya, an illusion, he called a personification of deception. What is 
the difference between illusion and deception. Dana? Almost the same. So he stated that it is stated in the Hadith, which are supplementary documentation or scriptures of the Quran, that there will be a personification of a particular individual and he will be a master of deception. And if you understand the Vedic injunctions, then at the very outset in this Kali Yuga, it is stated that Kali will be an illusion, deception, illusion. The subject matter the same. 5,200 years ago in the Vedas, 1,400 years ago in the Quran. The river of knowledge flowing from its source to a different time, different place, different zone, but the information identical or almost identical. I find this very same knowledge being expounded by the rabbis and I find this very knowledge expounded by the pastor. Slight change here and there. In Sanatan Dharma, we do not personify Satan. In the Abrahamic religions, Satan becomes personified and he becomes an enemy of the Lord. In Sanatan Dharma, the divine and the non-divine exist in you. You have to get rid of the non-divine by coming to satsang like this, picking up arms and ammunition and annihilating within you the demon. So sometimes the demonic might tell you, don't go to satsang, it's COVID. Then the divine must tell you, no, this is the, the same satsang changed my life. When I was in a very, very dark place, I landed in this satsang and this satsang made my life bright. Now I shouldn't hide. I shouldn't hide if this satsang could change my entire life from absolute hell to heaven, then I'm sure COVID-19 has no place in this satsang. So you have to use the divine tools and you have to annihilate the demonic. And at this point, I want to point out that we try our very best in this satsang to stick to the COVID-19 rules and regulations. All the seat covers is washed daily. The floor is mopped daily. We have, through Jay Bhai and his company, many, many bottles of sanitizers, both for the air, for the floor, and for your hands. I 
I don't think you could compare sanitizing this satsang hall to any of the public places you go. Because there is only one satsang and immediately after that satsang this place is totally sanitized. If you go into a supermarket, if you go into a shop, that place is not sanitized after each set of people that come in. But you can go to those places. And you see the irony. You can work in a situation that is not continuously sanitized. You can do all your other things where there is no sanitization as much as this hall. Then on the same breath, I was having a discussion with Jay Bhai and Katija Bhavi yesterday. And I said I would like to ask the question, this ashram has visitors the entire day. You are not here, you don't know. There are more people that come visit this ashram that attend satsang. And either my, myself, Mataji or Shavan, we have to personally attend to these people. We don't know these people. They come in from various places because we have a Goswami. Those concerned devotees only concerned about themselves. How many of them or how many of you have asked or cared for the protection of the Guru? Mataji, Sherwin, and Benjamin. Really, how many of you sit at home and think that this Guru does not charge us anything? We only come to this satsang for our own upliftment. How many of you thought that at what danger the Guru and his family place themselves. If you think in COVID-19, if you think in COVID-19 can exist in this satsang, if you think in COVID-19 can affect you from this satsang, then did you think of the Guru and his family? So this are sensitive questions, these are tough questions, but it has to be discussed, and I discussed all of this in the open forum. And this was inspired by Vishwada Ramanuj Das, who is the secretary of this organization. And he was hesitant whether to attend our annual general meeting or not, based on perceptions from his family. If you sit on the board of this organization, then there are certain responsibilities that you sit with. God is not there only for your dark moments. God's supposed to be there for all your moments. God's supposed to be there for all your moments. And all of us need to have certain principles. Principles not only when we are getting 
the same principles should be there when you are giving. The same principles should be there when you are giving. And it is disappointing for a guru, especially when he hears feeble excuses. When he hears feeble excuses. Then the Guru starts to see whether you in this satsang only as an opportunist, only as a materialist, or you are following the Guru's teachings as he teaches. And this is a predicament that the Lord himself has. And this is why he created the material universes. This is why he created the material universes. This satsang is not an order and supply satsang. This satsang is not an order and supply satsang. There you can go to temples and take those order and supply vows. There are order and supply vows. You go to temple, you fast for so many days, and uh, you'll get certain benefits from the devils of death. Here is a lifelong commitment to yourself, to principle, and to God. Yeah, you, yeah, you have to have devotion. You have to be devoted. Today I started the satsang, how many minutes late? Five minutes late. Because one family had to send Shavan to pick up Tibetan and they landed. But I didn't mind. Why I didn't mind? Because this family has devotion. The year would devotion. I could even keep God waiting. Because this family has devotion. All of you understand? So all the scriptures teaches you the same thing. This discussion that I'm having. is taught in all the scriptures. It's taught in all the scriptures. The state president gave certain directives. He stated that an X amount of people can go to satsang. We are within that amount of people. Aren't we? If you feel people are getting too close, some people are calling this socializing. If you see people are getting too close, what is your duty to do? What is your duty? You personally keep your distance. Isn't is it an excuse not to come to satsang? Because most of you are new here. The people, the bigger beneficiaries, the quantified the bigger beneficiaries of my satsang is afraid to come to satsang. For trivial reasons. For trivial reasons. Most of you are new. What would have happened if I closed this Sri Narayan Dham for reason of COVID? Uh, 
I don't want you to put your hands up. But how many people benefited directly in the satsang during COVID? What if I use COVID as an excuse and lock the gates on top? So these are topics we have to discuss because I am not here for numbers. I'm here for one plus one to equal to two. I'm here for one plus one must equal to two. If you don't like one plus one equaling to two, that is your problem. My problem is one plus one must equal to I must teach you principle. I must teach you sincerity. I must teach you selflessness. Selfishness does not exist in the Lord's domain in any religion. In any religion. If God gave you the capacity to choose when to connect to Him, then there's no reason for the satsang. Is there any reason for the satsang if you as an individual had capacity to connect to God whenever you wanted and how you wanted? So we should feel, we should have a conscience, we should have a conscience. We need to keep the wheel of Sri Narayan Dham turning within the COVID-19 protocols, within COVID-19 protocols, is it? We need to keep the Sri Narayan Dham wheel turning. If we all become selfish and sit at home, who's going to turn this wheel? Because we noticed that in this COVID-19, many, many families came here in darkness. And many, many families have benefited in this period, the grace of the Lord. Is it not? And if everybody takes the grace and go home and sit down, who's going to keep this wheel turning? We are within the state, state president's recommendations, aren't we? We seated 1.5 meters apart. Hmm? At this point in time, if you go to any public place, is there 100% adherence to 1.5? Everyone has a mask on, but are you seeing 1.5 meters? Not in government offices, nowhere. You understand? So you can't contradict where you are benefiting materially to where you have to come for service. And this has been the problem of Sanatan Dharma, of Hindus for many, many years. They'll give you every excuse not to come to Satsang, Mr. Maharaj, Hindus will give you every excuse not to come to Satsang. And Hindus are the biggest complainers of all the miseries that they are suffering. They cry the loudest, they complain the most, but they do the 
least. Not only here in South Africa, around the world. They worry about others the most. They sit on the couch and they'll talk and talk. Look at the other religious systems. They have discipline. They have discipline. They wait for the day of worship. Yet our people will find every excuse not to come to service. So I, I, I diverted from the mainstream topic just to bring this understanding because there are those that are at satsang are asking questions. You think they have a right to ask questions about those that are not at satsang and they were beneficiaries from the satsang. So it is an internal matter here yeah, at the Sri Narayan Dham. But people are asking me, Acharya Ji, A, B, C and D, they came, they benefited, they are now with feeble excuses, they are not coming to such. And I have to answer, I have to answer and I have to be forthright. I have to be forthright. I don't think any satsang has advertised the rules of COVID-19 more than this satsang in the world. In the world, every posting of this ashram has the COVID-19 rules and regulations. Every posting. Are you reading? Prisla, you see the COVID-19 rules and regulations, go on any other page, any other institution, any other temple, any other ashram and go see if they can compare to ours. In the world, we are world leaders. We are world leaders in promoting the regulative principle for COVID-19. And it's the data is there. Katija, is the evidence there or not there? Is it there or not there? It's there. Since the inception of COVID-19, nobody has advertised the regulative principles of COVID-19 more than this institution, the Sri Narayana. So it is ironic that some of our own have decided that it is dangerous to come here, but not dangerous to stand in supermarkets, not dangerous at other places, you understand. And I've answered the questions that devotees have been asking, and they also have a right to ask devotees that are attending satsang regularly have a right to ask why beneficiaries from the satsang are not attending regularly because we are within the confines of the COVID-19 protocol. When I go in my kutir, are there any violations in this hall? Any violations? You will all keep up the COVID-19 protocol as far as possible. We are almost at the end of the year now. And our result is that nobody got COVID-19 coming to the satsang from the beginning up until this point because we kept up to all the regulations as far as humanly possible, haven't we?
and we know that there was one person that attended satsang whilst that person was positive. But nobody else got affected with that COVID. Okay? It's because we are within the rules and within the parameters of the rules and the regulated principles. Are there any questions? Any questions? And it is interesting to note that there are people from other religious institutions that attend the satsang without fear, who were not beneficiaries in the satsang, who had no experience to, to validate that they have full faith in this institution because of being beneficiaries. They come from other institutions. So ultimately my point is that there is no reason for regular devotees up until the state president changes the dynamics for not attending satsang. And I won't accept any feeble excuse. Because I see you also. Unless you are seated at home and you don't come out of your house, then I'll understand. But if you are in supermarkets, if you are everywhere else, then there's no reason why you shouldn't be. Yeah. Is it logical? Does it make sense? Does it make sense? Okay. Are there any questions? No questions? Jai Shri Nanda.